What's happening guys? Mike Smith here with Cal Speed Karting, and this is your Super Series preview for round number one. It's the uh, third style of this new uh, new kind of preview. It's a little bit longer one too as we got a lot to cover. Uh, this weekend marks the start of a very special year for the Super Series as we kick off the 10th season of this championship on Saturday. Again, taking to the Clasco counterclockwise course that I've uh, highlighted in the other two previews. Uh, so take a look at those if you want to learn a little bit more about the track. As with the other championships that we have on offer uh, this year, the Super Series will remain pretty much identical in its rule set. Uh, obviously, the, the rolling start is going to use tram lanes, though, for the A main, and the standing starts being uh, straight up instead of staggered. Things that we'll cover in the driver's meeting. After arguably the uh, the deepest championship battle last year uh, for the podium, which the you know ten drivers going into it having a shot up all the way up to second or nine drivers, excuse me, uh, we'll see several drivers return here in 2019. And in this preview, we're going to take a closer look at not only who the contenders could be for the overall, but also each of our subcategories that we have here in the Super Series. And we're also going to highlight a few big names who'll be out here to play this weekend as a one-off. And start things off though with a, a look back at previous champions and some of the history of the past nine seasons. Like I said, it is a, uh, it's a big year. It's the 15th year of Cal Speed, the 10th season here for the Super Series. And uh, just to add to the cool factor, uh, we will have our 100th event this year, <laughs> and it just happens to land on the Classico GP. Uh, so the Classico GP will be the 100th Super Series event uh, later this year. We're going to do some cool stuff for that. Uh, it's just going to be an awesome year, and we're going to add to it here uh, with all the history that we've had so far. Uh, we're going to add even more here in 2019. So far, uh, we've had 31 drivers that have found the top step of the podium, but only half of that number can call themselves multi-time winners. Uh, nearly 50 drivers have walked away with hardware from the coveted Super Series podium, but only six have walked away from the season as a champion. And the first person we're going to look at here is none other than the John Kimbrell. Uh, John actually is the guy who kicked things off with a championship in 2010 and in 2011, the only driver to go back-to-back -back, uh, here in uh, the championship for the Super Series, and also won for a third time, the only driver to win three by scoring the championship in 2014. For the longest time, he was the winningest driver, uh, but that would get surpassed by the next guy on the list, Logan Calvin, who uh, picked up his first championship in 2012 and is one of only two drivers to win the Super Series twice, uh, winning his second championship, actually, in 2015 in a very dominant fashion. He had five wins in that one season. Uh, Logan actually is the, the winningest driver in Super Series history. He's got 12 total. John Cambrell has 11. Next guy on the list, uh, 2013 champion Sergio Brava, who actually did a come-from-behind championship in the final round uh, in that year. Uh, he's the only Masters driver to score an overall championship as well. He scored the Masters championship and overall. Uh, and obviously there's... A couple of cats we've looked at that could possibly do that, but Bravo, definitely the, uh, the, the cream of the crop when it comes to the Masters guys. Miles Calvin, uh, he won the championship in 2016 uh, in the, uh, the most talked about thing I, uh, throughout that season in my previews. I was talking about the Brothers War. It was actually Miles versus Logan most of that season with Miles coming out on top. Uh, he had three wins of his own back-to-back -to, -back to uh, kick the year off. Miles Calvin, uh, champion in 2016. 2017 champion Patrick Britton. Uh, he's still racing with us uh, right now. He actually missed the season opener, but he does plan on running the entire year. But uh, uh, 2017, big year for him. Uh, he was able to score the championship and do it on a very consistent basis. He did get a win that year, but only had the one and really dominated in the consistency factor, bringing it home one round early. And of course, last year's champion Alyssa Yanni uh, she did a lot like Pat where it was a consistency that kept her at the sharp end and actually kind of surprised I think people on the halfway through just how consistent she was being and uh, not only did she pick up her very first uh, Super Series win she backed that up and got her second Super Series win as well last year uh, bringing home the championship one round early as well which obviously brings us straight into the new year and there she is again the 2018 Super Series champion, Alessiani, coming back to defend. She is the one everyone is chasing, the number one driver for Super Series, uh, at least for round number one. We'll see how everything uh, shakes up. But uh, big year for her last year, 
uh, and she's going to see if she can be the third two-time winner and the only the second person to go back-to-back -back in those championships. First person on the list, Sean Fight, last year's second place guy uh, to be the challenger to, to chase. Obviously, everybody starts out uh, even playing field as we get things going. Sean Fight also was uh, able to score his first uh, Super Series win last year. He brought home the Classico GP win, uh, the 10th Classico GP. So a big win for Sean. What a cool way to get your um, get your first win. And actually, you can see that behind him is John Kimbrell, the guy he had to beat to do it, uh, Mr. Classico himself. Um, Sean Fight definitely going to be a guy that we're going to be watching for uh, at the shop end, uh, sharp end all, all year long. And maybe a guy that uh, everybody wants to see maybe snag that podium. He's been so close so many times, uh, but yet to get a Super Series podium. Last year, his best year for sure, Chris Ware to third place overall uh, and also was a contender in the Ironman Championship. Five top fives in 2018, including a fourth place. So he's been close multiple times. We had 10 races, and this guy was in the top five, half of them last year so right on the edge and i know i know it's something that chris wants to eclipse this year uh, championship or no i think he just wants to get on that podium and definitely win a race obviously he'll be a contender as well we talked about masters guys having a shot at the overall and uh last year's fourth place overall driver diego morales we'll talk about his masters accolades uh, a little bit in, a, in just a second but yeah if there's a masters driver who has a shot at the championship overall this is definitely the guy um He's confirmed he's going to be back to defend that. So he goes from not doing a full season ever to doing his first full season last year, wins the championship, and now he's going to back that up. So I'm, I'm pretty stoked to see what he can do in year two. Patrick Britton, 2017 champion, and last year put in a just a, a an awesome run, just an inspired run there in the, uh, the finale. Kind of put it all out there. Was 10th in the standings coming in. Ends up getting fifth overall, grabbing some hardware at the very end, and, and really kind of showed us the end exactly why he was a championship uh, winner before and someone we you can't count out. Uh, fifth place overall last year. Uh, he is going to miss the opener. He's not going to be here this weekend, but he does plan on running the rest, and I think even nine races, he's still someone we got to keep an eye out for. Sixth in the standings isn't on this part of the uh, breakdown, but seventh is Bill Craig. Uh, perennial front runner, always at the sharp end, uh, really puts pressure on these guys on a regular basis, uh, and just needs that little extra. He's gotten a, a Super Series win before, uh, been in the the podium game, uh, but uh, yeah, Bill Craig is going to be somebody that I think, uh, again, with the new tracks and stuff like that, he's got a pretty good knack of learning that stuff, but more technical tracks are definitely his forte. I think we can see Bill Craig have another big year. And Adam Nagao, he was uh, P9 last year, uh, balancing a little bit of 206 and sport carts last year. He's doing it again this year, uh, running 206 and uh, and the sport carts. But I think that we could see uh, kind of a return to form for Adam Nagao here this year. He was ninth in the standings last year after kind of coming back from a, a lot of up and downs. And he ended the year very, very well. If, uh, if that's how he carries into the new year, then, yeah, Adam's going to be very good. TJ Blackledge. Uh, he actually was just outside the uh, the top 10, but was one of the top 10 contenders, excuse me, one of the top five contenders. Uh, he just missed the finale and was able to give that a go. But uh, a lot of raw speed and uh, and talent out of TJ. Um, he actually was runner-up in the spec class in 206 as well, another double-duty guy. Um, yeah, uh, he's, he's going to be someone who should be fighting for the overall podium for sure. The craft is going to be a thing he needs to work on. He's still fairly new, right? He's only been racing for a couple of years with us, but uh, like I said, a lot of raw talent out of this kid, and uh, hardware should be in the game. And speaking of talent, this guy right here, Paulo Franca, he uh, he was actually point leader at one point, did score a win uh, in his very first uh, full uh, Well, he didn't even make a full season, but th that was the plan going into it. Uh, but early on, he was one of the guys that we were all watching. He started late in the 2017 year and uh, came into 2018 really strong. Uh, he's learned a bit about how things work around here. He knows the rules a little bit better. And yeah, Paulo Franca, he's going to be someone to watch for right out of the gate. I uh, expect him to get another W at least and definitely be a championship contender. This guy, Andreas Prieto, uh, a lot of us know who this cat is. Uh, he's actually uh, only the second person who's kind of a fly-in, if you will. He's not a local. He has to fly in down here to win. He did that last year. 
the, in the penultimate round, uh, Andres uh, picking up that uh, victory. Like I said, only the second person to do that. First person to do that was Adam Kellerman many years ago, flying in from the uh, Northwest. But uh, Andreas, uh, the idea was for him to run the full championship season and, and go for a championship, but he's actually going to miss the opening two rounds uh, that's developed uh, just lately because of school. So, yeah, unfortunately, Parade is going to miss the first two, but I guarantee those other eight races, that should still keep him uh, heavy in the uh, the podium hunt. I don't know if a championship is going to be in there or not, but I'll tell you, if anybody can do it on uh, two less races, Andreas is definitely the guy. Next guy we're going to talk about, we're going back to the Masters Championship. It is Diego Morales. Like I said, he was P4 overall, and he did win that Masters Championship in the first go-around. Um, and again, somebody who could definitely make something happen for the overall. His number one challenger, Alexander Bermuda, is actually not going to have a full season run. He's going to be here this weekend. Um, we talked about him being a, a potential wild card guy in the Ironman, and again, he will be here in uh, the Super Series. But not doing a full year, he's actually concentrating the cars. So he's not going to get a full season into this. He's going to do a little bit of this and a little bit of 206 to complement his car program. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's Bermudez uh, not going to make a third try at it here. Unfortunately, I'll have to try to do it next year. The schedule does dust in the line. And then uh, Jose De Silva, couple-time winner uh, here at uh, in the Super Series. Last year just had some of the worst luck I've seen for a guy, uh, his 2018 defense of his 2017 Masters Championship just did not go his way. He did pick up the G50 title uh, in 206 at Tri-C, kind of the Grand Masters Championship over there uh, for drivers 50-plus. So uh, Jose De Silva back here in the uh, in the Super Series, and barring the really crappy luck that he had, uh, he should be a contender as well. Steve Spring. A definite podium runner, uh, and every year he's been in, uh, in this group. Like it, it's it's a odd deal if you don't see him in the top five regularly uh, for this class. And once again, I do think Steve's going to be another podium guy. And this guy, Rodney Bryant, uh, he won the Sportsman Championship last year. Really came on strong. I think uh, he's not Sportsman eligible now. He just pointed himself out. He did uh, did too good last year. But uh, he could he could be someone to watch for for the uh, for the Masters here. I mean, he's gotten better and better. Last year was huge for him. Uh, shrugging off an injury right now, he's gotten a lot better. Uh, he did put some time in during the clinic, and he looks pretty damn good. So Rodney Bryant, watch out for him. Masters uh, podium contender for sure. And that brings us to Grand Masters, and one of the coolest stories at the tail end of last year, Tony Wyka, the 2017 champion, went from third to first in the finale last year. <laughs> it was just crazy. Um, Wyka bringing home the championship. He's going to go for three in a row. Um, he's uh, he's definitely someone that uh, you you can't count out. I mean, all all season last year, he was kind of playing third fiddle to the other two guys I'm going to be talking about here in a second. And, uh, and then right there at the end of the year, he started coming on a little bit stronger, getting better and better. And, uh, well, it showed. He was able to put it down in the finale, and it just... Incredible to go from third to first and snag that championship. And the guy he took it away from was actually Tom Zevin, who quite, uh, quite uh, hilariously said in the um, uh, in the podium, or excuse me, the the banquet, missed it by that much. <laughs> Tom Zevin did miss it by that much. He actually was uh, second now. I think for the for the last two seasons, he's been the the guy right there. Last year was his first eligible year. Uh, excuse me, two years ago was his first eligible year, and the last year, missing it by uh, just a little bit. And he, him and the next guy uh, that I talk about were the guys at the sharp end. But Tom is definitely uh, going to be a contender once again because uh, he just keeps getting better in him and, and Tony. And then the next guy, Jeff Latimer, are all right there. Latimer actually uh, putting up some very, very good numbers, him and Tom, who's actually in the background there. Uh, both very, very close. Uh, find each other on track all the time. And, uh, yeah, they had they had Tony's number most of the year until the very, very end. Uh, and Jeff went from second to third right there at the end. Um, Jeff's been uh, in the Grand Masters game for a long, long time. And uh, he's been he's been a front runner and a podium hunt guy. He's got a few pieces of hardware for it. So watch out for Jeff to have another good year this year. Uh, he was out earlier getting some, uh, some practice. So let's see what Jeff can do in 2018. Brian Starr is next on my list here. And it's, it's mainly because if the guy can put a whole – bloody season and he's going to be at the sharp end he's just he doesn't get a full season under his belt if he does and he's actually going to be here for the opener for the first time in the last three seasons and uh yeah he could really shake things up because he's able to put big numbers up too 
Uh, mistakes really are what kept him away uh, from the top, aside from missing the whole year. But uh, Brian Starr is going to be a runner for sure. And the guy that I think could really shake things up here is John Rice. John is in his first year of eligibility, actually scored uh, just a few more points than Tony Weika last year overall. So if he was a Grand Masters last year, he could have been the champion. He's not. Now he is. But that just goes to show that he is going to be a contender right out of the gate. So an already very tough Grand Masters group just got a lot tougher with uh, John Rice entering the fold. And then this guy. I'm very stoked to, to, to say that Joe Sabella is going to be coming back into the game. Not going to be here this weekend, but he has mentioned that he plans on getting back in. And this is a guy who ran, I think he was second or third uh, in 16, I think it was. Um, gosh, I can't remember now. But uh, he's he's been right the sharp end uh, the couple years, and he was getting better and better. I think he took a little bit of a time off, and now uh, he's got that fire again after being you know, really weighed down with work. Joe Sabella, he can, uh, he can make things happen, and he could definitely be a wild card for this championship in Grand Masters. And then we're talking about sportsmen, and of course i got to talk about Spencer Russell. He is the uh, P2 guy from Sprint Series last year, and uh, I think on paper is the guy everybody needs to be kind of, or should probably be chasing uh, for the sportsman championship. He didn't actually run but a couple of races in the uh, Super Series last year, so he was he's still very much eligible for the uh, Sportsman Championship. Like I said, uh, Sprint Series, P2 last year, Winter Series champ, and uh, did get himself uh, a couple of wins in there, I think two or three. And actually showed very, very well uh, at the Sprint Series opener. It's a 2R uh, driver, two-race only driver, uh, basically sweeping the thing. So Spencer Russell, probably the Sportsman driver to beat, uh, here for round number one, and uh, at least definitely going for the championship. I think the guy, he's he's going to be right on hot on his heels is going to be Evan Karp. Karp was number three in the Sprint Series last year, uh, and actually is the highest uh, sportsman driver that uh, is still eligible from last year. He was sixth in the standings, uh, and again, his first full year last year of racing. So he learned a ton. And uh, and Carp is going to be someone that we have to watch for. He's uh, he's also a 206 guy. He started about halfway through last year or so. And uh, he's just gotten better hand over fist. Just a ton of speed out of this kid. Um, if, we can, uh, if we can get some of the, the fundamentals and whatnot and kind of get some of that rookie stuff out of the way, Evan's going to be very, very good. But again, he's pretty pretty damn new. So for him to do so well so early is, is going to be pretty strong. And uh, I'm really just looking forward to see what he does here in year two. Speaking of uh, uh, excited to see what he's going to do is Tyler Redmond. This guy finished the, the year very, very well. Um, definitely a building year for him. 20, uh, 2018 was. And here in 2019, Tyler's got a lot of momentum coming in, especially after uh, bringing home a trophy in, uh, in the machismo. So uh, Tyler Redmond, uh, he, he's, he's also trying to put time in the 206 a little bit. Uh, he's really going to have some focus here in the first part of the, part of the year of, of uh, of his race craft and whatnot. And I think if he can add the craft to his already stout speed, especially in sprint, but he can definitely make things happen here in sportsman as well. And uh, Michael Chen, next guy on the sportsman list, uh, he's actually someone that has been just outside the top five in sprint and sportsman last year. Um, he, he looked really good at the sprint opener. He had a he had a penalty that kind of knocked him out of the deal, but and he understood it, and, and he, he served and whatnot, and he's like, yeah, I know what I did wrong there. But man, did he look good. Like, probably the best Michael Chen's looked yet. Uh, and I, he put a lot of time in the, the offseason. And then, and then the way he looked at the opener on the new track and everything like that, I think that, yeah, Chen can have a real big year here. Um, just needs to make sure he can hit the events. He's always had to kind of juggle things a little bit with the, his schedule. But if uh, Chen is here, this could, be, uh, this could be Michael Chen's year for sure, if he, uh, if he can do the whole thing. And then a guy who uh, also had a uh, pretty, pretty uh, eyebrow-raising opener at the Sprint Series is Doug Yanni. Um, he's someone that I think is going to be someone to watch in both Sprint and here for the Sportsman Championship. Um, really has just come on strong the last part of, of uh, last year and uh, is carrying that momentum into this new season. Obviously, uh, he hasn't slowed down at all, and it doesn't look like he's lost a step. Another guy who actually got uh, uh, burned a little bit on a penalty. He needs to you know, just make sure he knows what's going on, not make those mistakes and whatnot. But again, 
someone who's just kind of started. You know, it's been Alyssa carrying the uh, the racing torch here in the Yanni family, and now Doug's getting into the game. Oddly enough, going the opposite direction, the daughter first, and then the and then the father. But uh, yeah, Doug is going to be somebody who can can really, I think, make things happen this year, especially in the sportsman class and in sprint series. And then we've got a few a uh, few wild card guys. I mean, we talked about them already in the Ironman. Those same people are going to be here. You know. Uh, Woody, Hart, Bryant, Bermudez, all those guys are going to be here. But Henry Morse on the uh, the list. Morse is a couple-time winner here in the uh, the Super Series. He's on the entry list. And while I doubt that he's doing a full season, I mean, that'd be pretty cool if he was. But if, while I, I doubt that he is, he's definitely going to be someone who's going to be the sharp end this weekend. Every time Henry's out here, he's a, he's a threat for the uh, for the hardware. And uh, and while I, he's most of his uh, um, success has gone in the other direction, in the clockwise direction, um, I don't doubt that he'll he'll pick up the new track quick. Um, but uh, it, and then you have obviously the man, the myth, the legend, John Kimbrell will also be here. He's also not putting in a whole year. He's just trying to balance things out with work and whatnot, and those priorities that adulting getting him. <laughs> but uh, you know, John Boy is going to be out here, and and obviously uh, would love to maybe click off another win and tie uh, Logan for the overall uh, in the uh, the most wins column. Uh, definitely gave me something to watch for. Last time I think he was out here either. He was right there in the, I think he got hardware. He was, I mean, John Boy is really good. Uh, and then next guy on the list, actually number six overall in the championship, Charles Eichland. Not putting in a full season this year. Uh, he's going to be doing a few of the events that he has to do. Uh, just other things going to be pulling him away, the conflicts, and trying to save some of that money. But he is going to do a few races, and when he's here, you know, the former winner, former Classical GP winner, he's definitely going to be a guy that we have to watch for. And he's he's pretty stout in these uh, these counterclockwise directions as well. So Chuck Eichland's going to be someone to watch for. And he said it was a maybe, but if he's here, Taylor Hayes is going to be someone to watch for. Uh, your 2018 Ironman champ, he's a, he's a top 10 guy as well from the Super Series. Hayes, another one of those guys who's kind of moving on, doing other things in life, and is not going to be able to get in a, a full season in. First time since the uh, the inception of the Super Series that Hayes is not going to be put in a full season. He's been around since the very beginning, and this is going to be the first time he doesn't get a full season in. So he's got nine of them. Year 10, going to be shortened up with uh, adulting a little bit, but uh, that's how things go. But Hayes is definitely going to be someone to watch for. I think he'd love to pick off a win here before things are all finished up. And really the last thing that I, I want to kind of touch on before we close this thing out is just how many new drivers we have this weekend. We've got near 20 drivers making their Super Series uh, either de debut or first run uh, in the Super Series in a year, like they didn't run last year at all, um, and, uh, and or people coming back for the very first time. we got a lot of new faces going to be in the game, um, like I said, near 20 of them. And there's a lot of people I just don't recognize. So it's going to be cool, cool if, uh, if some of those become Sportsman Championship guys or Grandmasters or otherwise. Maybe add their names to the fold. I know there's several people who are not going to be here this weekend, but plan on being around for the for the rest of the year. So it's just kind of the tip of the iceberg right now, and it's going to be really interesting to see how the uh, the weekend uh, uh, ends up and what we'll see in the first event. So that's the preview here for round number one of the 2019 Cal Speed Super Series. Appreciate you guys tuning in. If you haven't signed up for the Super Series, still got time. Make sure you get in there stat. We'll see you guys at the track. <laughs>